This is Growth and Development of the Newborn and Infant Part 2 from um, Kyle and Carmen's textbook, uh, Pediatric Essentials of Pediatric Nursing. So I know I get my clinical students all the time saying, but how do I do a developmental assessment on a newborn? They aren't doing anything yet. Well, you look at the reflexes. And this is a list of those newborn reflexes. Um, and in clinical, I want you to check a couple of them and, and tell me about it. Two or three. Moro, if you startle them, you get that, right? Root. They look, you stroke the cheek and they're looking. If you put your finger in the mouth, they should start sucking on it. Asymmetric tonic neck reflex. This is, um, I was taught it as the fencing reflex. If you turn their head one side, they put that hand out and the other one up. So they say it's like they're holding a, a sword fencing that's where the idea of fencing comes and if you switch their head they will switch their arms uh, planter and palmer grasp so if you put your finger in the hand they automatically grasp it if you do the same thing on their foot their toes will curl around step reflex you put one foot down they act like they're taking a step with the other one babinski you stroke or come down the lateral outer uh, foot there out the sole of the foot planter and they squeeze in that should switch about the time they start walking uh, we usually consider that normal up to 18 months but really it for most people it changes up earlier than that's about the time you start walking so there are good pictures of all of those different reflexes in our textbook so the developmental theories that we're going to look at. Um, first is psychosocial, and that is Eric Erickson's theory. And for infants, he calls it trust versus mistrust. So how do they develop trust? That's the goal of this age. And caregivers respond to the infant's basic needs and create that trust. So with feeding, diaper changes, social needs as well. So touching, holding, talking to the infant. The infant can rely on having their needs met by the primary caregiver. One thing that happens during this uh, first year, towards the end of it, is the infants begin to realize they're separate from their caregivers. In the beginning, the baby cries, they get fed. They control the world. They control their caregiver. And it's not till towards the end of that infancy that they realize they can cry and the caregiver doesn't have to come and feed them. Um, and that's actually good for them and as they get, not in the early months, but towards the end, they need to develop um, the ability to tolerate a small amount of frustration. That mom finishes eating before she feeds the baby and the baby is okay crying for a couple of minutes, not getting fed immediately. Uh, so the infant learns that even though they're having to degrade delay gratification it is going to come and that still is part of developing that trust in their caregivers so meeting their needs um, Piaget's theory of cognitive development and his ages are always slightly different he calls this sensory motor and it's birth to two and this is where kids learn through their senses they squeeze it, they bite it, they look at it, they throw it, they listen to it, they stick it in their mouth and see what it tastes like or what textures it has, right? They use their senses. Um, the infant initially is just kicking around. As they get to be a, a few months old, those actions become purposeful where they're intentionally reaching for something, not just randomly uh, moving. So they gain control of those reflexes as well. Most of those um, early reflexes go away depending on which one, three to four months for most of them. Uh, they also learn familiar objects and sounds. Um, you know, they learn, I don't know, the car coming home is, you know, a family member coming home. Um, they repeat actions for the desired effect. So they learn that when they shake the rattle, they get that sound. So they do it again and again, or uh, whatever the toy may be. Around eight months, they develop object permanence. This is an extremely important um, skill that they need to develop. This is where they realize 
that things still exist even if they can't see it. Prior to that, they drop a toy and they look around for something else. They don't follow the toy to see where it's gone to. Um, a person out of sight, they're just gone, right? In those early months, peekaboo really is um, magical. You go away and you come back. That doing that is important because it helps them with the object permanence that you exist behind that blanket even though they can't see you. And um, they also begin to associate symbols or actions with events. So they learn that waving bye-bye means they're leaving. And here's uh, learning through senses and then you don't go away when we play peekaboo. Freud's theory is called psychosexual development. He calls this the oral stage because all of their pleasure comes through the mouth, right? Sucking, eating, as they get to that teething stage, biting. For development, um, development is very predictable. Exactly when it will happen is not predictable, but what will come next is. Things go, we call it cephalocaudal or head to tail, so from the head down and proximal distal, so from the center out. So babies first develop um, strength in their neck. They can lift their neck, they can turn their head before they develop strength in their trunk where they're able to use their shoulders and lift their chest off before they develop strength um, where they can hold themselves up on their legs. Same things from central to distal. They first are going to use those shoulders before they start batting with their hands before they're able to use their hands to grasp things. Uh, okay. This is a table in the book that I want you to memorize. That means there will be questions from this on the exam. So it's what they're doing at different months during that first year. Warning signs that there's a problem. Uh, if a from birth, infants should respond to loud noises, and if they don't, we are worried about their hearing. Children um, who don't focus on an object, so even from birth, they should focus on you if you put your face right in front of them. Remember, if you get out of you, you don't exist anymore, so they're not going to track more than just a tiny bit, but they should focus and have a small amount of tracking going on from birth. Uh, they should start to make sounds and babble by before four months of age. If they're not at four months, we need to refer them. Um, they should be able to turn towards sound, figure out where that sound is coming from by four months. And then um, their eyes don't always work in alignment, but by six months they should. If they're still having their eyes crossed most of the time at six months, that should be a referral. Warning signs for problems with language, not making any sounds by four months, referral, not laughing and squealing by six months. And if you look back on the chart, th these are late. So uh, that should be referred. Um, not babbling by eight months and not using single words with meaning like mama, dada, um, whatever they call the pet or the brother or their blanket or whatever. They should have some things that have a meaning. They're not just babbling anymore uh, by a year. So social and emotional development. Um, around two months they should start to have that social smile. So babies sometimes will smile in their sleep prior to that, but it's social. You smile at them, they smile back by two months. They should mimic your, your facial expressions, right? We all make those goofy faces at babies because they make them back. Um, by about three to four months. Six to eight months, they like things like peekaboo and pat a cake. Um, and around eight months, we're going to see they start having stranger anxiety and separation anxiety. They now know who is part of their family and who is not. And they don't like being separated from their primary caregiver. So we say play is the work of children. It is what they use to develop motor skills, both fine and gross motor skills. It's how they develop language. Uh, it's how they learn to solve problems. At 
During infancy, they do solitary play. They really don't interact with other children. Um, it's very important during infancy that the primary caregiver read to the infants. That's a big part of how they develop both language through hearing it and the cognitive skills of imagining and visualizing things that aren't necessarily there. Of course, you're using books with lots of pictures, but it still develops uh, a lot of cognitive skills. Safety for infants. Car seat safety is big at really every age. Um, we do want to make sure infants are in an appropriate car seat and never left unattended, right? There's always stories in the news of some a baby getting forgotten in a heart car and they die. Uh, we want nothing in the crib, no blankets, no pillows. They should just have a nice warm onesie or a jammy sleeper on. Um, if they're in a bouncy seat or a swing, buckle them in so they don't fall. Prevent choking hazards, aspiration, by using appropriate toys, so toys that are only labeled for 0 to 12 months. Don't give them older toys. Make sure the floors are clear, especially when they start being mobile. No coins, pins, things like that on the floor. Um, no toys with buttons or things that they can pull off. Don't give them snacks that are easily aspirated. Things like popcorn, grapes, nuts, carrots, and hot dogs. Keep plastic bags away from them. Uh, old drapes that have cords that hang. The reason that newer drapes don't have those is too many babies got hung by those. Uh, don't ever leave them alone in bath water, and it doesn't take much water. A few inches is all it takes, and in fact, they can drown in anything that's got water, in a toilet, in a bucket, and then, of course, swimming pools. So make sure swimming pools are fenced. Nutritional requirements. Breast milk is best, but formula is an acceptable option. Infants should get breast milk or formula only for the first six months, and then it continues as a primary source of their nutrition until they're 12 months old. Around six months, we start introducing other foods. Rice cereal traditionally has always been the first thing that we introduce, and I know a lot of pediatricians are starting to say that may not be um, the best choice, but whatever the pediatrician recommends is what we're going to do, but we're never going to introduce more than one new food at a time and wait three to five days to ensure the baby doesn't have any reaction to it. But we're not going to give cow's milk until they're at least a year old. They're just not able, um, their GI system is not ready for it. If you're using just the same foods as the family, but smashing them up when the baby starts on foods, you want to make sure you don't add any seasoning no salt, no sugar, no seasonings added to it. And we really want to limit fruit juices. This has been a problem where parents, when they start adding um, other fluids other than breast milk or formula, would give them too much fruit juice. And it's high sugar with really nothing else. Sleep and rest. Make sure your crib is safe. Should be a firm mattress, no blankets, no pillows. Make sure they're not right by the AC or heater or an open window. We use back to sleep as um, the teaching method to teach letting infants sleep on their back. We've seen a huge decrease in SIDS since um, that campaign began. It's best to have a bedtime routine and you can start that about four months of age to allow the baby to fall asleep on their own in their crib. If they fall asleep held when they wake up during the night and they're no longer held, it startles them to being fully awake, where if it's the same environment they fell asleep in, they just sort of roll over and go back to sleep. So um, that's a recommendation for helping babies uh, learn to kind of self-soothe and fall back asleep. So some common developmental concerns during infancy, colic. And this usually lasts from about three weeks to three months, and it's crying for three hours per day. Most babies, this is in the evening, and there's really no reason for it. They're not hungry. They're not dirty. Um, some things to try is decreased stimulation, try motion, white noise, swaddle them. Lots of babies spit up, usually from overfeeding, so good burping. Um, as long as they're gaining weight and voiding well, we're not worried. And then teething, those cold teething rings that they can chew on are very helpful. 